over a month since Liberal MP Greg Fergus made history by becoming the first black Speaker of the House. Fergus was elected to the job back in October in a rare mid-session election to replace Anthony Rhoda, who resigned after honoring a Nazi war veteran in the House. Since Fergus's appointment, he's focused on decorum or restoring it in the House of Commons. It is so important. <laughs> Colleagues. Sit down. Hello. I spoke with the speaker in his office. Have a listen to our conversation. Hi, Mr. Speaker. Good to see you. Pleasure to be here. I with appreciate you. you making the time to do this uh, here in your beautiful office. Well, thank you. Uh, you've been in the job now an entire, just over an entire <laughs> month. Still the newbie. It, it, yes, still the newbie. But but you have been involved in politics for a long time. You've studied Parliament for a, an even longer time. Is it what you expected? It's even better. Uh, to have the opportunity to uh, be elected by one's peers and to uh, help them uh, promote the privileges that they have, uh, to be a chief diplomat, to be the administrator of the House of Commons, it's even better than I thought. What makes it so good? The people. Uh, really, you really see, um, you see, you have to understand, being a member of Parliament is, is probably the greatest privilege that I've had in my life. But also the ability to then now uh, help them uh, promote the parliamentary traditions that we have uh, and to be their impartial arbiter. Um, it's, it's an amazing thing. You get to see them. Uh, you, you appreciate them from a different perspective when you're sitting in that chair as opposed to sitting on to one, one side of the house. Have you found it difficult at all to strip yourself of the bias that you came with to the job with? People ask me that all mm -hmm. the time, right? Mm -hmm. I find over the years it's been actually really easy. And, and I'm wondering if, you feel, if you're finding the same thing. It took all of one minute. Really? Uh, it really it really does. I mean, it's just a different role that you play. And uh, to make Parliament work, you know that you need to have a speaker that's impartial, uh, a speaker that uh, is looking to, listening to the questions and listening to the answers, making sure that the debate is going on in the way that it should go on. So, no, it, it took all of, uh, all of 60 seconds. When you were elected, the opposition, uh, you know, when I was talking to members of the opposition, they were largely actually pretty supportive. But some of them had reservations given their experience in, in two aspects, right? And, and we know this and our audience knows this. Often we'll do MP panels, let's mm -hmm. say, and you would be the person the government wants to put up because they felt like you could defend their position and be dogmatic <laughs> I about wish, it. I wish it was always that case. <laughs> Sometimes I think it's just I'm the only person who was available at that time. <laughs> I don't but. know about that because it happened a lot. But at the same, also, you know, they pointed to a, some committees, for example, where mm -hmm. you were part of efforts to filibuster because mm -hmm. you, you felt for whatever reason that what the opposition was doing was wrong. But the way in which you did it was something that you kind of pan now, right? This idea of, you know, you were speaking Latin, you were going on and on, you were kind of, you know, operating still within the rules, but a, a bit flagrant about them. Mm -hmm. Do you regret any of that now that you're in this position? And I'll ask you again, has that been hard to shed? It hasn't been hard to shed. First of all, I don't speak all that often as a speaker. Um, funny name. Uh, <laughs> but with regard to what I did in the past as a member of parliament on a particular team, that was my role, but my reason why my colleagues elected me, and it was, uh, you know, a secret ballot, and it, you know, even if you want to say that it was partisan games, the Liberals were are not majority; um, it was a minority. It had to reflect the support that I had to have had to come from all member, all sectors of the House. If you're looking for someone who's imperfect, but who has if you take a look at the positive and the negative and you add up the, uh, the balance sheet and you think it tilts more towards the positive, well then, I'm your guy uh, and I can do that. But if you're looking for perfection, uh, you know, I, I've made mistakes like everybody else has. And I will make mistakes in the future too, but I'm just hoping that I'll make new ones, innovative ones, not repeat the old ones in the past. <laughs> we all hope that, right? Exactly. Uh, you, you came to the job as well with a very specific message about improving uh, uh, the sense of decorum, respect, and tone in the House of Commons. I wondered in the last month if you can share with Canadians who are watching today beyond what they've seen on TV or in question mm -hmm. period, what you have been doing behind the scenes to work towards those goals? Well, very much. I try to work with the uh, House leadership of all parties uh, to encourage them to making sure that I'm sharing information with them, that I'm listening to their feedback in terms of ways that I could improve the role that I play as, as a speaker. Some of their suggestions are extraordinarily helpful. Uh, some of them I might, we might just agree to disagree on. But 
the idea is, as I told everyone, I'm going to be transparent about what I want to do. I'll be working with my chair occupants, the other people, the deputy speaker, as well as the two assistant deputy speakers. We're forming one team. We've agreed that what we're going to do is making sure that we're applying the rules consistently across the board so no one feels that they're getting a rough ride by one chair occupant as opposed to another. Um, we are coordinating our, 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 our enforcement of the rules and we're trying to, of course, the best way to get people to follow the rules is get them to really adopt and see the benefit of it. So Mr. Speaker, on the way here I was thinking about the issue of decorum and whether it's that that is contributing to you know a more negative view of the House of Commons or of politics for for Canadians I think you know instinctively I think there needs to be a level of partisanship I'm not sort of you know too fragile a about what happens in here I think there needs to be a back and forth but what there is a lot of that maybe contributes to it is that it's so scripted do you think the level of scriptedness is a problem so I agree with you. I think that partisanship is important and having distinction and tough debates, that's really key. But you're right, I think, as well, in terms of scriptedness. We are probably, the, the scripted nature of, of some of the debates that we have in the House of Commons, I think it leads to the impression that we're much further apart than we actually are. It's sort of a debate over small differences, but we've, we've blown them up. Um, if we were less scripted, if we were more off the cuff, if we had rules like they, if we adopted the practices, I should say, um, like uh, they have in the UK, where you can't walk in with with speaking notes, you can have just, I mean, you could have a couple of notes jotted down, but you can't come in with, with written speeches and read off a text. Uh, I think then maybe we would have uh, a more authentic debate and one which Canadians will discover that, although there are differences they might not be as sharp as we present them to be when we, you know, when we write down every single word. Just before I let you go, you, you talked about being a kid and the impression that you had of this place and, and of politics. You are the first black Canadian to mm. be Speaker of the House of Commons. How do you hope that impacts kids? I hope, they, hope their, their horizons have just expanded. I hope that they, sometimes you gotta see something to believe it. And I hope that they see that A, it wasn't hard to do uh, to become Speaker of the House of Commons. You just need to, you know, need to get elected, have the support of your peers <laughs> of, <laughs> and respect of your peers uh, to get there. But it wasn't a barrier. It wasn't on anybody's mind, I think, as they were casting a ballot uh, that, you know, they could vote for or against me because of that issue. That's the beauty of this country. So I hope that people will feel, A, they will not self-censor, that they could see themselves if they want to be speaker, if they want to be prime minister, they want to be a professor, they want to be a doctor, they can, they can do it. And secondly, I think it helps people who are not part of those communities also see once again uh, that that's not the issue. Uh, the issue is what you have between your ears and not the color of your skin. I'll leave it on that note. Mr. Speaker, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.